Unfortunately, in our country, the pandemic is likely to get worse before things improve. Many people are afraid and isolated. Joining us now is Father John Gribowicz, a priest of the Diocese of Brooklyn. And Father John, the crisis seems overwhelming, um, but our faith can be a strong fortress in troubled times like this. How can our religion help us get through it all? Yes, I mean, I think one thing that we have a tendency as Catholics is that we reduce our faith life to showing up for church, right? right. And that's been taken away from us. Mm -hmm. um, and so at this point, it's like, how do we understand what it means to be a Catholic apart from ritual? Right. And while ritual is a, you know, indispensable, I mean, we, we need to be participating in ritual, our faith doesn't stop at going to church. It actually is a place for us to then leave the church building and be able to understand what our relationship with God means throughout the rest of our week. Mm -hmm. And the Lord himself you know, would say, you, know, you need to go to your inner room. And it's in your inner room where you're able to experience the love of God. You know, everyone's so worried about catching the virus. You know, if somebody sneezes or coughs, everybody's, you know, are you okay? Are you sick? Is anything wrong? Do I have to be worried now? What's the best Christian approach yes. to something like that? Uh, we don't know where this is going. We don't know when it's going to end. Uh, we may have all ideas as to how we think we should be responding, what we should do. But the key thing is just that when we're in these moments of thinking of all these possible scenarios and who has, a, who has the, the, the virus, who doesn't, um, it's really about us trying to just be silent with ourselves and just come to a point of asking God, why am I allowing my mind to go all these different places when the only thing I can do is one thing at a time, right? Mm -hmm. Our mind allows us to think about the future, think about the past, but we're only able to do one thing at a time. So we have to be patient with ourselves and realizing that we can't think of all the different scenarios that could possibly happen. And I think it's very providential to be having this interview on this great feast day of uh, St. Joseph, mm -hmm. uh, the husband of Mary, because he was a man who understood both contemplation and action. Uh, here's a man who in the scriptures doesn't say a word. Um, and he's a man who's in the midst of a massive amount of confusion. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this woman who he's supposed to marry is now pregnant. Like, right. what's going on, right? right? <laughs> uh, but he was able to listen closely to how God was speaking to him. And then he acted accordingly, mm -hmm. which is why he's also the patron saint of workers, too. Mm -hmm. So right now, we understand that we have to be good contemplatives in order to be good workers. And each one of us are gonna be called right now to act in a certain way. And it, it may be simply like, okay, I need to actually stop watching the 24 hour news cycle right, right. now. Mm -hmm. And because once I do that, I then open up my space for knowing what else is it that God wants me to do right now. And they're using the word contemplation. So what's the difference between contemplation, meditation, praying? Yeah, it's a really great question. I think that most of us have been told in our own way to pray right now during this time. And in fact, the president had a, a, a day of prayer. And that, of course, is essential. But I think that we sometimes reduce prayer to intercessory prayer. Like we're praying for a miracle, essentially, to happen mm -hmm. right now. Or we're praying that our leaders and scientists will figure this whole thing out. Right. Um, contemplation, though, I think is actually what we can actually do right now to help our souls understanding how God is so present to us right now. Because it's contemplating my disposition, contemplating why I'm thinking about the things I'm thinking about, and allowing those thoughts to simmer in a way to trickle down to knowing, okay, what is the next thing for me to do? Mm -hmm. So it's not just waiting for God to respond, it's now allowing God to respond to me and for me to respond to God. Um, meditation, you mentioned that word too, is usually when you have like, when you read a scripture and you just allow those words to somehow try to respond or try, try to uh, make an impact with you. In fact, I could give all the viewers a little homework. I was thinking about uh, Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 34. Matthew, Matthew 6, 25 to 34, I want to make sure I have that right, because it's dependency on God. And if we're having a hard time praying, maybe just reading that, uh, because we can understand that God is not abandoning us in this. Mm -hmm. And I would just maybe suggest uh, a quick thing, five minutes, get reconnected with your breath. I know that may sound to be like a very foreign thing mm -hmm. for Catholics, but just have deep breaths mm -hmm. because if there's one way to know that God is present is when we are connected to our breath because we don't control it, we don't decide to breathe, but the very fact that God is acting in our lives and allowing us to live means that we still have purpose, we still have a reason to be, 
And uh, that, to me, shows the presence of God right now in our inner room. Yes. Father John Gribowicz, a priest of the Diocese of Brooklyn, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, me. Christine. If you're watching Currents News on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button and then click on the bell to get instant updates about all of our newest content because we are putting your faith in the news.